Earth Ring, which is a potential under collision, which is a risk aversion measure. And this is actually in our problem, a potential on the coalition. So what we do is actually control this pair of ring uh, over the coalitions to make some preferred rather than others. The third step is the cost level matching mechanism. So once having defined the objective, once having controlled the agent's incentives and preferences by, by manipulating the Nash bargainings, we, we use a cost level matching algorithm that will converge to the equilibrium, the matching that we are looking for. I'll particularly focus on the stable matching algorithm that we have been uh, working on and that we have been creating actually. We have developed this mechanism. It's called backward deferred acceptance. And it's very similar to the well-known Damon Chaplet deferred acceptance algorithm, except for the fact that it's a bidirectional process. So on one side, the user's devices will make proposals to the access point and the access points will, will gather the proposals and send back some new proposals to the, to the user's devices, devices by taking into account their, their complementary group and uh, the groups that they can form with each other. This is done using cumulative and dynamic list of proposals. And the interesting point is that it's also a no-regret procedure. So no user devices will regret to attempt to connect to another access point if the proposals made by this access point to itself is not satisfying. Here is the structure of the example. It's actually two. Uh, the preferences of the agents are taken as inputs, and there are two intricate loops, one proposal loop from the user's devices to the access points, and one inner loop that is from the access points to the user's devices. We have shown some properties with this algorithm. The first is that in the defined problem, it converges uh, in a finite number of, of steps. The second result is that assuming a tie-breaking rule that will break the indifferences of the agents or the groups they can take part in, the algorithm converges to the unique cost table matching in our problem. And the third point, the third main result with respect to this algorithm is that it converges in a finite number of proposals. Uh, the, the, um, the, this number is actually a big O of N5, with, where N is the number of agents taking part in the market, or so taking part in our game, in our matching association. Here are some numerical results that will show how the mechanism behaves in the end. The first is to look the first plot looks at what happens if we look at maximizing the overall throughput. So we do not use the mechanism in this step. We look only at maximizing the social welfare, the overall throughput of the network. In this case, we have one-to-one -one associations in some cells and one-to-one -one associations in others. And when comparing it to the core stability that we have shown, the one-to-one -one association that result when only using core stability but not other three steps mechanism, we have one-to-one -one associations. So, what this shows is that when letting the agents match with each other according to their preferences, in a decentralized way, uh, only one-to-one -one associations result, so some are unassociated, but this was already the case. But since some conditions are missing, actually, there is a cost of stability here. There's a price to pay because the system has to pay, uh, has to pay a price for the cooperative equilibrium. The, the overall throughput in, in this case is less than the overall throughput in this case. So this is the price for using the core stability solution concept. Nevertheless, when using um, the core stability and control mechanism that we have been defining, our three steps mechanism, um, we have many uh, previously unemployed users that are actually connected. So we counter this side effect that led the agents unassociated. And when comparing it to what we obtain by maximizing the network throughput, but in control value after the control step, we are actually very close. So even though there is a price to pay for using the stability, there is also the, the cost here for using the mechanism is actually very low because when comparing it, when comparing the result of our mechanism to what we achieve in the max network throughput, when using um, the control step, we have achieved 99% of the optim of this optimality. So that's very good for us in terms of stability after the control, but with respect to the control that was uh, with respect yeah with respect to the control 
uncontrolled case, which is this one, we achieve in this case 50% of performances. So there is a drawback that is that results from this control, and this drawback is actually because we connect the agents that are not connected in the previous case. So the presentation of this. Uh, main contribution about Wi-Fi is not over, and I'm now turning to the second main contribution, which is called stability in constrained crowdsourcing marketplaces. This comes as a complement from a theoretical point of view to the previous contribution, because in the first in the first contribution we have been looking at matching with complementarities and pure effects and resistance of stability in this case, and in here we look at matching with contracts and externalities. So this is the second part, the second kind of challenges that I've been proposing at the, at the beginning in the stable matching section. So first a few words about crowdsourcing. So crowdsourcing <coughs> system actually consists in online platforms, and there are thousands of this, in this, uh, of this kind that distribute human intelligence tasks between some requesters, which may be firms, and between workers, which are the users that connect to the to the platform to uh, process the task and receive a payment for, from this processing. So typically, these are simple and in, these are simple uh, simple and independent tasks such as image labeling, um, ranking, software development, and spam identification, or uh, games from protein structure recognition. And there are various. This is, this is absolutely not an exhaustive list of what we can find in on crowdsourcing platforms. But the most known of them is probably the Amazon Mechanical Turk. And in the Amazon Mechanical Turk, so films come, propose tasks to the platform, the tasks are displayed to the users that want to process the task and be paid uh, for this processing. And the mechanism for the users to be assigned this task is actually what is called a browse and select. So users can see the task, can see the tasks that are displayed by the platform, and they just select them and process them. This is called the pool methodology because the workers connect and pull the tasks that are displayed. There are some drawbacks by using this system. So the first drawback is with respect to the user participation. In, in fact, if the preferences of the agents, both firms or requesters or workers or on the other side of the matching, uh, if these preferences are not satisfied, then they may leave the platform and use another platform that would actually result in an association, allocation of tasks to the users, that is more preferable according to both uh, sides' preferences. And this is a typical stability problem that we have been facing uh, in economy, that has been facing in economy. That's why stable matchings and two-sided markets are, have attracted attention. The second user is also with respect to user participation. So there are externalities and peer effects. And one known effect is that the agents, so the users that process the task, tend to select the task with less competition. So this is a typical peer effect. Uh, if there are more competitors, then I may not choose this task because uh, I have less chance for my, my task to be selected by the firms or to be validated. The third point also, uh, the third drawback is that we, it is quite hard to uh, tackle the associations when dealing with complex tasks, such as what, what about if there is a scheduling on the film side? Uh, what, about if, what about if there are some coordination constraints among the tasks, both in a given film or across the films? Um, some mechanism actually in this case cannot guarantee the feasibility of the allocation. Solutions to this problem have been proposed. There are a lot of solutions that use machine learning solutions, so learning, iterative learning. Um, there are also solutions using stable matching for crowdsourcing. Um, some focus on the static settings, other focus on the dynamic settings, dynamic arrival and departures of agents in the platforms. And there are also the very well-known literature papers on the firms and workers problem with contracts and externalities that we find in stable matchings. Nevertheless, none of these uh, solutions proposed allow to solve the problem of designing a stable matching mechanism that would both take into account the, the externalities, the scheduling constraints, and uh, the stability, so to design a, matching, a stable matching mechanism. A few words about the money. On one side, the workers, that's very simple. On one side, the workers. On the other side, the firms. And 
on the film side, scheduling constraints across the tasks that are submitted by the films to the platform. There may be intra-film scheduling, so given a film, here F2, the tasks are mutually constrained, so TO3 has to be executed after TO2 or at the resulting allocation of the mechanism um, for TO3 to be processed or to be actually to have a worse for the film, TO2 also has to be assigned. There may also be uh, inter-film scheduling, so which essentially links the task between the films rather than only inside the given film. To deal with this, we have defined what we call the feasibility, and the feasibility is actually one of the most important notions of this study because it allows to define the agent's choice function and preferences. So the definition is the following, given a contract X, which is with respect to a firm, so the firm, the, the, this contract is for a task that belongs to this firm, this contract is feasible in a set of contracts at a given matching, if given the contracts executed by others, so given what the others do, what, what will be assigned for the others, there is a way for F to execute X in big X. So, in other words, the, the, the reformulation of this using a content is that whatever the other films do, what the other films do, actually, sorry, given what the other films do, the film F must be able to choose a set of contracts such that such that all the predecessors up to the task corresponding to this contract X are actually executed. Here is an example, and I'll, I'll focus on the unfeasible case here, the third example. So a firm has three tasks, and it considers a set of contracts, one contract in green for this task to one, and one contract in green for this task to three. And what it says is that the contract in green for task to three can, is actually not feasible, because in the green set, there's no way for the firm to choose a contract for task to two. So there's no value actually in executing this task, and uh, it may even be, it, it means that it, the matching, the resulting matching, the assignment of the contract for to three is actually not feasible with respect to the constraints. So this is our definition of feasibility, and the feasibility has been used to define the firm's choices, but first, I'll focus on the worker's choice functions because this is the very classical, uh, we, we have kept classical for this on the worker's side. We have assumed that the choice functions that uh, for the workers, the choice, choice functions of the workers, which is the union of the individual choices, actually satisfy the substitutability condition and the irrelevance of rejected contracts. These are very well known assumptions in matching games with externalities. Um, this is not new. What is interesting for us is to focus on the film side because this is where the, the constraints are arising in the platform. And we have defined the choice of a film F <coughs> when facing a set of contracts X, knowing that the matching in the platform is mu. Uh, the choice of F in X at mu is the set of mean salaries in what is feasible in X at mu. So each film will minimize its cost uh, while choosing among the feasible tasks. We have defined the constraint substitutability that comes as a generalization of the substitutability that is considered in the most recent works in stable matchings, which is also called, already called generalized <coughs> substitutability, but this one takes into account the constraints that may be facing the agents, and particularly on the film side. So the definition is the following, for any two sets of contracts, X and X prime, and matching mu and mu prime, including in the set of contracts, such that X is included in X prime, and mu prime is preferred according to a pre-order relation with respect to mu, and third condition, if all the infeasible tasks in X at mu are also infeasible in X prime at mu prime, or not of mean salary, then the rejects of the films in the small set at mu will actually be rejected from the bigger set in X prime at mu prime. What it says is that when facing a superset, if I can choose, if the films can choose in a set, and if they can also choose <coughs> in a superset, and if there is a first matching and a second one, the films should actually reject more contracts in the superset than in the subset. And this essentially just generalizes the substitutability, well known substitutability condition, but take into account the feasibility, the notion of feasibility. We have been using these properties to design um, a 
to, to show actually the convergence of a well-known algorithm to uh, equilibrium to stable matchings in our problem. So this this, this uh, algorithm, sorry, is called the modified diffusion acceptance algorithm. This is a known algorithm that has been proposed by Pichia and made in 2015, which can actually I want to tell the details of this algorithm because the fundamental steps of the algorithm actually can be defined using a function that is called f and that defines the recursive decision taking process of the algorithm. So it takes as input sets and it gives us outputs other sets that are the results of acceptance and rejections by the worker. 